before I go out and look for signs of animals and hopefully see something, I want to show you a classical example that applies to me on how I approach finding wildlife and animals. This place here is where I photographed the Kaipa Kelly last year. This is a place where it tries to attract female. I only saw one male, but I saw a few females. If you see this place, I didn't find this by my own. Someone gave me a hint. Peta, thank you for the hint. But if you have a place like this and you know an animal is around and likes this place, you can take a lesson from that home. There's no shame in getting help from other people if you're bad at finding wildlife, for example. And then you have to learn from that because keep in mind that I don't think that I'm really good at finding wildlife, <laughs> neither photographing, but that's another story. But I think I'm good at learning. And if you look at this place, it's kind of a bit more exposed. It's high up. You see, uh, you can find out how Cape Kelly droppings look like. You can see what kind of trees are around. This place is, yeah, it's exposed and it's a bit open and there are not too many plants on the, on the ground in the middle. Also, we have this cliff over there with, with these trees where the Cape Kelly seems to sit in. It takes a bit off the needles. I have that on video from last year. And this tree gives the Cape Kelly a good opportunity to look all over the playground which is occupying. So it's just, you find a place, maybe someone helps, finding, uh, helps you finding the place and then you learn from that place and take that further, which I'm trying in another forest because I think they're more Cape Kelly so that the males actually fight against each other. I would like to see that over the females, not just one male, even though I don't think this male is really bothered to at least get a fight in the season. So yeah. Going to a location, learn from the location, look for another location. That's what I think we should start off with. And now we go further in because I think I have something to show you. So if you found signs of wildlife, the next step for me often is, depends on the animal though, to use wildlife cameras to see when the animals are active, how often they are active, how the frequency is. Like I told you in the last video, that's one of the best tools you can have as a wildlife photographer are wildlife cameras, track cameras, trail cameras, game cameras, whatever they are called. Those are the most potent tools to find out when you're yeah, when your designated animal is active. But then comes another point from the last video into the game. You have to be out there a lot. Just just being out there. That's that was that's what helps. Something just happened that I didn't think would happen so soon. So I just have to get into camouflage and set my gear up and then we talk about what we see here just in a minute later. Let me cut in here real quick to tell you about today's sponsor, no one. I wanted to tell you about a new format that I wanted to do where you can showcase your photos, which would be called your best photos. I want to have a community format. It's not going to take a whole video slot in my monthly setup. It's going to be a bonus, basically, where we talk about your photos that you sent in via Instagram, if you want, or via mail. Just do that now if you have a good photo, if you have a species that you think you want to tell a story about, send it in with a small video or send me in some information about that species that you want to share with the community so that we can all learn from that. And I also think I already have a guest YouTuber slash wildlife photographer that can show one of his best photos of the season or of the month and tell us a bit about it. So that's one thing. The other thing is, thanks to Morton Hilmer's shout out, we reached 2,500 subscribers. And for the viewers that have been longer on this channel, you know that this means we do a subscriber special. That means send in your questions down below in the comments, how you like it, 
or on the community post what you would like to know from me. Personal, gear-wise, whatever, animal-wise, plants-wise, just send it in and I will answer these questions in a community Q&A and video where we go out or do something soon. I thank you so much for watching and back to the video. Well, if that wasn't a small adventure, I just got out from the situation where I sat. I really wanted to film the nest from another position, but now there was a jogger coming in and the black woodpecker just took off, so I thought this is the best opportunity for me to also get off so that the woodpecker doesn't really necessarily see me leaving. I really enjoyed this a lot. I had to wait quite some time and now I'm feeling quite cold. It's still really early spring and <laughs> it just hailed. The weather changed a bit. Um, insanely cool though. Uh, I, I nearly don't know what to say right now, but I just hope that I can film it again. It was nice to really hear the woodpecker and it's also good that I got to see it after I just got this glimpse of it flying away. I think the camouflage was definitely worth it. Uh, that helped out a lot. And in some positions in the forest here, you can't really build up a pop-up height. It's just Norway, it's just like hills and stones everywhere. So I think a ghillie suit is in some positions the best solution. And I enjoyed this really much. I had at least 10, 12, 15 minutes just watching the woodpecker uh, working there. Because he went in and you can hear it on the video. that he's actually just still building on the nest and sometimes I didn't caught it on video but he just throws some wood out and <laughs> it looks so funny. <laughs> I'm so happy that I got like that shot where he's sticking his head out again because I just perfectly turned the camera on 
and shortly after that he left because the jogger came in. Yes, this, this bird must be used for people to visit because it built its nest in a dead tree around a path. I wanted to show you more today and just see look for signs, but the day has gone so far fast as already, yeah, so that I will have to cut it here and end it here, but we in in more videos we will definitely look out for more animals. Uh, keep in mind for the black woodpecker, for example, signs of it are when you see it pecking, like when you see woodpecker signs on the bottom of trees, close to the roots where they go into the ground. That's typical black woodpecker signs. Also, the oval-shaped uh, nest hole is normally black woodpecker. Um, it's quite huge. <laughs> So keep an eye out for that if you want to photograph this animal. I thank you so much for watching. Like the video if you want to help me out with general YouTube and the algorithm. If you're new here, maybe you like subscribing to the channel. I'm glad for every new subscriber that finds his way in here. And yeah, leave me a comment for the algorithm. And or if you have something to say, questions or anything else. I was glad having you here. And... Now I'm going home and getting warm. Bye. Couldn't resist to look once more for the woodpecker. And I will visit him quite a few times over the coming year. I just really hope you enjoyed this beautiful bird as much as I did. And we see each other soon in one of the coming videos. Thank you.